Here comes undefeated Butler quarterback Peter Brand throws to Ryan Lowry, who makes a nice catch and gets a first down inside the Booten 30-yard line. The Bulldogs go on to score. Brand catches the defense by surprise on the quarterback sneak. 7-0 Butler. Things then turn very sloppy. Five turnovers in about five minutes of this first quarter. At the end of this play, the Bombers fumble and Booten recovers it. But the Bulldogs can't stand prosperity. A couple of plays later, they fumble it right back on the exchange. Booten recovers. Seems like nobody wants the ball. Finally, though, Booten does put together a drive. Dan Drugak on the handoff here. Takes it all the way down to the Butler one-yard line. That sets up a first and goal for the Bombers. On the next play, quarterback Eric Fajardo able to punch it in on the sneak with the second effort. This game is tied at seven apiece, but not for long. Butler comes right back with the drive. Nice run right here by Keith Damiano. Gets a first down into Bombers territory. Peter Brand and Eddie DeMarchi hooked up a number of times in this game. The quick pass here for another first down as the Bulldogs are on the move. And they would go on to score the one-yard touchdown plunge by Damiano. 13-7, Butler in front. Bulldogs get the ball back. It's Peter Brand throwing this time to Andrew Terzilli. First down inside the 20. The Bulldogs finish off the drive in the second quarter. Brand's pass off one receiver's fingertips. Caught by Ryan Lowry behind that guy's head somewhere. It's 20-7, Bulldogs. Same score late in the second quarter. This pass deflected and intercepted by Matt Sheehan for Booten. He makes a big run back, but Keith Damiano the saving tackle for Butler at the 35-yard line. The Bombers get inside the 10-yard line, but then Connor Walsh makes a huge play. He punches the ball out, recovers the fumble. Eighth turnover of the half, 20-7 Butler at the break. The Bulldog offense goes right to work in the third quarter. Brand throws deep to Andrew Terzilli inside the 10-yard line. It leads to a Demetrius Gergut soulless field goal, and that makes it 23-7 in favor of Butler. The Bulldog defense forces a punt. The Butler offense goes right back to work. Peter Brand throws to Eddie DeMarchi, first down inside the 10-yard line. Once again, the Bulldogs settle for a field goal. Demetrius Gergut soulless top-scoring kicker in North Jersey, boots another one, 26-7 Butler in front. Fourth quarter, Booten punting again. This time the kick is deflected. The ball grabbed by John Ryan. And this is a nice run for a lineman down the sideline. 34 yards for the touchdown. He slides in safe into the end zone. 32-7 Butler. The Bombers do manage a scoring drive before the end of the game. Eric Fajardo to Joey Marini. The little pass here gets a first down. And it leads to a touchdown run for Dan Drugak. That makes the final score. Butler 32, Booten 13. The Bulldogs were able to minimize the amount of turnovers in the second half to secure the victory. We control our own destiny, and that's our attitude offensively. And when we went in at halftime, we pretty much told them, buckle down, secure the ball, and just let the game come to you. The Bulldog defense held the surging Bombers offense to just 13 points. In practice, we preach defense. We blast music during defensive practice to get us pumped up, and it obviously worked today. With their record at a perfect 6-0, and the Bulldogs look to be firing on all cylinders with just three games remaining in the regular season. One game at a time, because I know if we look forward to Mountain Lakes, we might let down versus Callan, so just one game at a time, and that's it. We're looking at it as now we're in the second half of our season. Everything we've done to this point has been a warm-up to what's about to happen. We've got, like I said, next week with Kinelon, that'll be a big game because of the local rivalry. And then Mountain Lakes will be a great renewed rivalry. And uh, they're going to come in as the returning state champ, haven't lost in two years and all that. And they're probably one of the best coach teams. So it'll be interesting what happens after that game to see where we are in the whole playoff system.